Thank you, Minister. That was a very inspiring speech. And I am taking away, when I leave in about five minutes to go to the airport, um, everything you said. Thank you very much. Um, I'm going to keep my remarks short, if I may. Um, and I'm going to go off script, which will make Rosita very unhappy, but there we go. Um, but here's the thing, and I was talking to some very bright people at my table uh, at lunch. The nature of the emergency we all know, the size of the emergency, especially when you put nature and climate together, is something like $44 trillion of a loss to our global economy. That's pretty scary uh, over the next foreseeable uh, period. And we're sitting here today, everybody acknowledges it, there's knowledge about it, there's acceptance, there's awareness, there's even some analysis on it. But as I was saying at the table, the biggest impediment to achieving our dreams and our hopes and our goals around climate and biodiversity, nature and social inclusion is going to be finance, unfortunately. And so I'm so glad to be here amongst you. I know Scotland is the center, Kate, of uh, ethical finance, and this is exactly where all the initiatives should be thought through and, and should emanate from. And so, we're, so when I look at finance, and I'm a financier by, by, by experience um, and by career, I'm in UNDP for six months, so I'm trying to combine development and development issues with finance, and here's what I see, and I'd like to leave this with you before I go or shoot off uh, to the airport. We know that there's a two and a half trillion to four trillion, nobody really knows, uh, gap in finance for SDGs. That's a huge number when you think about it. The good news is that when we look at biodiversity as, as, as one part of it, finance tripled, right, uh, in 2019 to 134 billion. The bad news is that you need about 850 billion annually over the next 10 years to finance this stuff. And I keep hearing this all the time. And, and they say, well, yeah, I mean, we just have to come up with new financial instruments. So what I'd like to leave with you before I leave is the following. Why isn't money coming into this space? What are the issues? This is what we need to think through. From where I sit, the, the issues are the following. Nature, climate, biodiversity, all these issues and all these assets are global common goods. And so we have to take a global common goods approach to structuring finance around it, number one. Number two, given what we've gone through and that we're still going through with the pandemic, it has introduced a new factor into any sort of financial structuring, thinking, anything, which is around social inclusiveness. And so whatever we structure, whatever we put in place by way of finance for this space has to be intentionally inclusive from where I sit. It's not just that it will be, it's not. And that I mean, Kate, as you were saying, I was in a panel yesterday with indigenous group uh, representatives and they were like, look, we look after 80% of the world's biodiversity. Why don't we even get listened to? We're not even around the table when you guys are structuring stuff. So there's a real issue around e inclusiveness and so on. Finally, when you look at uh, finance, you say, if I have to put in place the fact that, that these are global common goods and I have to be intentionally uh, inclusive, what kind of financial structures, what kind of financial instruments do I come up with? What we're looking at in UNDP, and this is very important from where we sit, is that whatever we come up with has to land at the country level. Global architectures are important, extremely important, by, in terms of providing a way forward, but ultimately it has to land. And this is where entities like us uh, come in and hopefully we can work with all of you in doing this. When you look at it from a country level, it has to be inclusive, it has to include all stakeholders and rights holders. It also has to suit the finances and economy of the country. So some of the things we do are these things called integrated national financing frameworks, which are connected to our NDCs of each country. We connect them because the NDC is almost like an investment prospectus that a country puts out to the world, saying this is what I need to finance in the space. The, the INFF, sorry for the acronyms, but I do work at UNDP, um, is, 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 is how we bring in all the finance, what public, f uh, private, ph philanthropic, other, carbon credits, whatever they may be, how, you know, that's part of the INFF, but it has to be at the country level. So with those three points, what I'd like to leave you with is, as you go through your two days, I believe, here, um, I'd like you to think about how to structure financing interventions to achieve our climate and bi biodiversity goals 
which take into account these factors. As you said, it is not easy, but it is completely doable. I'm an optimist by heart. I have hope that we will get there if we all put our heads together. And all of you have much more experience in this than I do. I think if we can come up with something, land it at the country level, be intentionally inclusive, we will actually raise these vast sums of money because guess what? The money's there. It's the, it's the structuring and the opportunity that has to be unpacked and structured. Thank you very much. I'm sorry I could speak to you for four days, but...